Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. The next firewall that I wanted to bring to your to your attention is called Endian Firewall. It's based off of Italy and the current version that was released in 2020 is 3.3.2. However, ever since then there have been numerous uh, hotfixes for bugs and adding on a different corrections and functionality to the firewall. So it is still um, an active project that can be downloaded and utilized. Um, just like uh, Arista Firewall, this does this is considered a gateway on its own. Uh, it's got some features such as um, you know the multi-zone zone, IDS, IPS. Um, FTP, email, antivirus, anti-spam, content filter. It's got, uh, I believe this is one of the ones that has pretty good HTTPS web interface. Uh, like, I don't remember if this gave you the warning certificate about being uh, uncert uh, unsecure. But that's something that we're going to check out in the familiarization video. Um, it's got some pretty awesome services like transparent HTTP, HTTPS, FTP, SMTP, POP3, uh, DNS caching, DHCP services for all types of networks. Um, that's something that we're going to also talk about. Um, VPNs with OpenVPN and IPsec. It, it can be used as an NTP server. It also has policy-based routing. It's got uh, SNMP, VLAN support, um, user management for different ser services such as Radius, LDAP, Active Directory, uh, NTLM single sign-on uh, services, logging, and a couple other ones. But before we go ahead and dive into all of that, let's do what we did with Arista Firewall. And for the first video, we're going to install it. The ISO is about 350 megabytes. Uh, if you go on Google, just type in Endian Community Firewall um, and you're going to find it. There is no requirement to register an account and there's no requirement for you to log into um, any additional dashboards, which pretty much is the equivalent of PFSense. There is also a paid version of Endian. Uh, however, I do find that to be prohibitively expensive for home use. So once you start the ISO, um, heads up, it is based off of um, uh, Debian for, uh, sorry, Debian? I think Debian. Yeah, Debian 4.4. Um, so it is um, easy to install and it does not require a huge amount of resources. So once you start to set up, it is available in three different languages, uh, English, German, and Italian. For the purpose of installation, uh, we're just going to use it in English. Welcome to the FW installation program. Are we going to install it? Yes, we are. It's going to detect. Do you want to continue with the installation? Yes. And basically, it partitions and finishes the installation by itself. I, I believe that the only... Uh, Thing that we need to do with regards to configuring this is just to select which interface is going to be our wide area, wide area network, and which one's going to be our local area network. I don't remember if this was in the setup or if this was in um, full setup details. And uh, do I want to enable console? Uh, no. Okay. So. You're going to see that it's asking you for green interface. Uh, see, so the way it has its network adapters um, divided is red, green, yellow, and blue. Red being the wide area, green being the local area, the safe, blue being the secured wireless network, and yellow being uh, VLANs. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, okay, so it does ask you um, what IP you want it to be on the internal port. So you're going to say something that's going to be easily memorable to you, whether you want it uh, something that you're already familiar with in the 192.168 subnet or something else. Um, something to note is that the HTTPS uh, port 
is already set to something that is not standard. As you can see, it is uh, preset to uh, 10,433. So let's go ahead, finish installation. And while that is doing its thing, we also have OpenSUSE on the side to give us user interface for it because unlike Arista Firewall, it does not have like a built-in console. It has to be managed by a different system. Okay, let me finish this real quick. I'll be right back. We are back. So um, I had to figure out some things to remember how to do it. Um, one of the problems is that because I'm in a virtual machine in a virtual environment, um, things have to be a little bit different for me. So <clears throat> I first had to play a little bit with the network configuration wizard. Um, and this is, this is basically, uh, if it gives you any problems, this is basically what needs to do. You have to open up the console and you, the six, um, the six options that you have, you're going to choose option number five, and it's going to ask you for the root password, the default one because it doesn't ask you for a password during setup. The default one is Endian, lowercase, echo, November, delta, India, alpha, November. So you're gonna type in Endian. I have already gone through the process, so for me the password is a little different. And then it's gonna go through um, its, its little setup process. So it's gonna ask you for a host name, Yes, domain name, yes. Uh, red interface, this is gonna be your um, internet facing port. In, in your scenario, uh, just leave it as DHCP because you, it's, it, it really sucks. I'm not gonna lie to you, it really sucks to set it up through console. So just leave it as DHCP, uh, enter the interface that, um, you're going to be using as your uh, internet facing uh, it's just in the menu right above it um, there it is just in this uh, little list right here it gives you the mac addresses for all of your connected interfaces so if you can recognize which one is what um, this is going to help you in mapping your interfaces so for me it's going to be f0 for my wide area network my primary DNS, yes, yes. My green device is going to be called the local area network. My local area network is the internally facing network. So in my case, it's Ethernet 1. Yes, this is going to be my um, network and my subnet. So 192.168.0.1 slash 24. And of course, I'm going to enable um, DHCP services. Orange one, orange devices, sorry, is your demilitarized um, network because they don't have any additional, <clears throat> pardon, because they don't have any additional ethernet ports. I'm just gonna skip it. Uh, we're gonna leave the IP subnet um, blank. Blue devices is your wireless network. Again, I don't have an adapter available or sorry, to be uh, to be uh, perfectly clear, I just haven't added one, and I don't want to deal with it. We're gonna leave that empty, just like the IP and uh, subnet. We're gonna leave that empty as well. If you wanna have uh, SSH access to the firewall, so like command line interface, you can do that over um, secure connection with Putty, for example. You can turn that on. You can turn it off. Um, allow access to ports 2280 and from any interface uh, you want to leave that off because any interface includes the internet facing one so you don't want to have that if you are using it in a um, production environment or home like an area that you need to be secure so are the above settings correct? Yes, they are. Do you want to write the configuration? Yes, I do. We The configuration is written and it is now active. So now we're going to go to our client that's connected to it. 
we're going to log in. And as you can see, we do have network. So let's connect to it. Okay. Okay. So I have to correct myself when I said that it doesn't give you an invalid certificate. It actually does. So I do apologize about that. And let's see. Um, Indian to get free updates. You know what? Let's. Okay. Perfect. I didn't know that um, that would work. So connect over SSH and run the following command. So I believe this should be able to be done over console as well. Um, shell EFW upgrade update. No, what is what is it again? Upgrade, upgrade. So EFW upgrade upgrade no huh okay that's interesting okay that's interesting so it does need it to be um uh, okay so root and the password no okay um okay so when you're going to be logging in you're going to be logging in with the username admin not root and then you are going to be logging in with whatever password uh, you set up during the um, the uh, console setup. And that's it. You have Endian Community Firewall set up and ready to work. I do apologize for a little bit of confusion. It has been a very long time since I have worked with this. I, as I am going through, I will be learning uh, a couple of things about it as well, because it does look like some things have changed. So please bear with me. And uh, again, as always, thank you for joining me. See you in the next one.